subqueries are like nested queries. So you have a main query and then a subquery. There are two types of subqueries. One is correlated and the other one is non-correlated subquery. Correlated subquery is dependent on the main query in such a way that for every row in the main query, the subquery gets executed at least once. Non-correlated subqueries are independent of the main query and they get executed once. We have a list of predicates that can be used between the main and the subquery. Exist, not exist, and in are some of the common predicates that we can use and we had some earlier lectures on that. Additional set of predicates are any, all, or some and we'll see some example of those and some comparison operators that can be used as well. Hopefully this visual will help you understand the building blocks of setting up a subquery routine. We will do some lab exercises in which the concept of correlated and non-correlated subqueries will become much more clearer. So we are on the MySQL website. If you scroll down, you'll see the Sakila. Uh, you can pronounce it different way. I'll just call it Sakila a database. Just download the zip. We'll just do a save as. So we have a schema. That's where we're going to have the SQL statements to create our table structures. Then we have uh, data, which is going to be a lot of insert statements creating this Sakila database. And then we have the data model of how these tables are structured and related. All right, so we're going to do a file. We're going to open script. Open Sakila Schema SQL. All right, so we have our schema.sql file loaded in my SQL workbench. So it has a bunch of create statements, uh, creating actor table, address table. So we're going to be creating all our data structures through this script. And it also gives you additional information on the columns that we're going to be adding. So we'll just run this script all at once and it's going to create all the tables we need uh, for our exercise. Make sure the cursor is on the start of the script line and then click on the execute icon to execute the script. So just hit, hit, the, uh, hit that icon. You can uh, ignore the warnings that we are seeing in the output. It's still going to create the tables. So if you go to the object browser on the sys icon, right click and refresh, you'll see the Sakila database. And also if you open the tables uh, icon, you'll see the list of tables that was created. So this is sample data that we're going to be loading via the SQL insert statements to fill up our sample database. We will execute these scripts by clicking on the icon. So these insert statements will take a few minutes to load the data and you can see the status um, in the output pan as to how much time it's taking and how many records are being inserted. Let's try to see if we have data in, into one of the tables. So we'll just do run the same select star from actor table and see if we get data. So if you see in the result grid, um, the data is populated in the actor table, see the first name, last name, and a bunch of rows. So we are good to go here. So let's look at the first example of the subquery. We want to get the list of customers' names where the rental duration is more than five days. So they have rented the movies for more than five days. So for this information, we need the customer table and the rental table. So rental table will have information about the movie as to when the movie was rented out and when it was returned. And the customer table has the first name, last name. So we'll start with select first name, last name from customer table. So this is pretty straightforward where we're going to use the exists keyword. 
open bracket, and then we will start our subquery. So this is our subquery. So we're going to select star from rental, and we're going to give it an alias R, where, and so this is the join. Customer ID is common between rental and customer table. So this makes this subquery correlated query. Date diff gives you a difference between two dates. It's just a function that uh, MySQL has, and we'll go into date functions at a later lecture. But for now, just, just think of this function returning the difference between these two dates, and it will be greater than 5. So let's run this. So this gives you the list of customers who rented the movie for more than five days. Let's take a second example where we want to get the list of movies that are not available in any stores. So you want to get the list of movies that are not available in any stores. So we need two tables for this. One is film and the other was inventory. So here we're going to use not exist. So we're going to say select star from film. Give me all the films, not exist, and then your subquery, select star from inventory. So inventory table has a column film ID, so we can join the film to the inventory table on film ID. So it says not exist. So this will return me all the films that are not in the inventory table. So you can see there's a bunch of movies that are not in any stores. And this is an example of a correlated query as well. So let's take an example of subqueries that are not correlated. So the first one is where we want to get a list of all the payment transactions that are above the average payment amount. So if you look at so if you look at the script, select star from payment where amount, we can just use the operator greater than and then we can use the subquery and in that we just say select average amount from payment. So we're using the same table in the subquery that returns the average amount. And our main query is saying is that select star from payment where amount is greater than the average amount that gets returned from the subquery. So let's run that. So this list gives you all the amounts that are greater than the average amount. The second example is where we want to find out how many stores are in Woodridge. So our main query is select star from store where address in. So we're using the keyword in and we're using the address ID and the subquery is select address ID from we're using the address table and joining it with the city table in our subquery. So the subquery itself has two table that we are joining on city ID where city is Woodridge. So the subquery returns us all the address IDs that exist in Woodridge. And then the main query is pulling data from the store table where the address ID is in this list. So let's run this. So we have one store that is in Woodridge. And you can check that by profiling the individual tables as well.